Let us start this session with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are with us and you are here to strengthen us and guide us and help us to understand the words, the deeper meaning of these words that you have given us and know you better so that our relationship with you would be more strong, deep-rooted, and under all circumstances, be fruitful, so that we would be able to glorify your name through our lives. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The subject matter for discussion and meditation is Jonah and people of Nineveh. Jonah was a prophet. Now, who is a prophet? A prophet is a man called by God to be his representative on when a prophet speaks for God, it is as if God was speaking. A prophet teaches the truth and interprets the word of God. In looking into how many prophets ran away from God when called to represent him, only Jonah's name stood out. Then the question arises, why did Jonah become different from other prophets? Jonah lived and ministered in Israel during the 8th century BC, during the reign of King Jeroboam, as it is written in 2 Kings 14, chapter 23 to 29. Jonah had prophesied that Israel would expand her boundaries and under the leadership of the king, the prophecy had been fulfilled. As a result of these events, Jonah became a well-liked and popular prophet. People viewed his prophecy about the expansion of Israel's territory as evidence that God was on their side, that God was blessing them as a nation, and this was just the first step in Israel finally receiving the land promised to them by God. Alongside the expansion in territory, the people of Israel were also beginning to experience peace and prosperity. The only real concern, however, was that off to the east, there was another nation which was also expanding in territory, power, and might. This other nation was Assyria. Like Israel, Assyria was growing in power and influence. By the 9th century BC, Assyria had gained control of the entire Mesopotamian region and was beginning to think about westward ex expansion toward Israel. Israel believed that if it came to war with Assyria, God would give Israel victory. The people of Israel knew with certainty that God would not want a nation like Assyria to prosper. 
aside from worshipping false gods assyria was also a wicked and brutal nation nineveh was the capital of this powerful ancient assyrian empire it is located in modern day northern iraq so as far as jonah was concerned assyria was an enemy country and nineveh was an absolute forbidden land with this background information it becomes easy to see why jonah was reluctant to obey god's command what was god's command jonah 1 1 and 2 verses the word of the lord came to jonah go to the great city of nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me till now as i understand god had been speaking through his prophets directing correcting protecting and prospering his own people here for the first time god is asking jonah the prophet who has been well liked and popular in israel to go to the enemy country that to its capital nineveh and preach against it and point out the sins they have been committing further people of israel would have seen this visit of jonah as even an act of treachery as he would lose face in his own land among his own people what a dilemma also since he was popular in israel knowing his attitude he may have been entertaining the thought that he was indispensable this order for him to go to nineveh may have been god's way of letting jonah know how foolish his thoughts were these verses also tell us that god is aware of the situation in every nation city community family and individual psalm 139 verses 1 to 18 speaks of how totally each of us depends on god and how well he is aware of our every thought move and action he is not only aware of these things he is also close to us protecting us and providing all our needs even before we ask here jonah was running away from god in the opposite direction to put himself far from in a way god was aware of all jonah's thoughts saw all his actions and provided him protection according to his will that is god's will in all this what was jonah's mistake he was relying on his own understanding and self preservation and forgot that god would be with him since he is carrying out god's wish after all that happened which we are all aware of as chronicled in the book of jonah god instructs him the second time to go to nineveh what was god's command the first time 
Jonah 1, 1 and 2. The word of the Lord came to Jonah. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it. Because its wickedness has come up before me. What was God's command to Jonah the second time? Jonah 3, 1 and 2. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I gave you. What does this persistent effort of God to inform the people of Nineveh of the danger they are in tell us? One, God's concern even for the people who do not belong to him are in fact enemies of his chosen people. Second, sending his own prophet to the capital of this depraved nation, exposing him to the danger that are existing in that city. To strengthen him in the knowledge, though no matter what the circumstances are, God the protector is always there to protect us when we are on his mission. Three, letting them know that he, God Almighty, is aware of all that is going on. And it is God's desire that none should be lost and that all should attain eternal life. What does Jonah do in Nineveh? Jonah 3 verse 4 Though the size of Nineveh would take three days to go through, Jonah goes through a day's journey into the city. Probably his heart was not in it still. He probably was afraid of what the people of Nineveh might do to him, which could indicate that Jonah was not sure of God's protection, even after the rescue actions of God. To continue with Jonah 3.4, Jonah proclaims, 40 more days and in a way will be overthrown. God does not say anything about 40 days and destruction. God's message was that the people be made known that their actions are sinful and he is aware of it. Jonah changed God's message since he was prejudiced against the people of Nineveh. His message sounds like a curse on the people of Nineveh. This is how many of us misinterpret, misrepresent God's words to our own advantage. But God in his mercy still turns around the wrongs we commit into blessings. People of Nineveh respond differently to what Jonah expected. The effect it had on Jonah and the lesson God teaches him is another subject for study. What lessons do we take from the above incident in Jonah's life so far. One, God in his mercy has compassion on all mankind. Two, God is aware of all of our thoughts, actions, and deeds. Three, God is constantly reaching out to us to let us know our sinful condition and the need to repent. Fourth, he is using each of us in his own way to save others from eternal damnation. Five, 
we many a time resist god's plans and refuse to be of use to him six we many a time let our emotion prejudices distort the messages of god intended for the benefit of mankind seven we misinterpret misrepresent the messages of god to suit us and become stumbling blocks let god in his mercy forgive us continue to correct us and use us according to his plans amen